Hello, this is Memphis Community University. Uh, welcome, we are doing an AP Calculus for response question practice. It is going to be a graph for response question. Today is difficulty number eight. So we are getting up there in difficulty. If you haven't watched our channel, basically we go from difficulty one all the way up through difficulty 10 and every single general free response, free response question topic found on both the AB and the BC exam. So we have graph free response questions. We have particle motion questions, Taylor series, uh, any topic that you can think of. So when we get up to difficulty eight, then we start hitting the hard stuff. So hopefully uh, I'll be able to walk you through this question, but it's still a graph for response question. Even if some of the questions are a little bit um, weird or more intense than normal, we're still gonna be using our general rules. So we're gonna be using our rules for increasing and decreasing and things like that. So let's talk about this graph. So my graph is not the prettiest graph in the world, but looks like we are going from negative five to uh, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have a graph of F, and then we have a portion of F that we can't see that's gonna go from negative, basically from negative seven to negative five, but that's fine. Um, looks like we have two line segments here. Again, I'm not a great artist, so forgive me, but uh, this is supposed to be one single line. Notice that it goes up four, runs one, goes up four, runs one. So the slope of this line will be four. It's supposed to be one single line. And then of course, this is supposed to be a semicircle. Let me label some points. This is supposed to be at one, two, three, four, two. Again, not super even with this two, but um, not the greatest. Obviously on the exam, you'll have printed out nice pictures. But for here, we, we like to keep the budget low, but we still like to keep the knowledge high. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is also six, four. And then that should be good. Notice we are presented with a question where we have g of x is equal to an integral. We've done several of these in this video series as we go from difficulty one through 10. I believe most of the even numbers, difficulty two, four, and six have been of this format. So when you have this format, remember the one thing you wanna do before you even start looking at the questions is to write what g prime will be. So g prime of x will equal f of x. And then g double prime will of course be f prime. We might need that, we might not. But g is going to be area values. And then g prime equals f of x. These are going to be y values because this graph is of f. So these are going to be areas. And then uh, if we need to, we might not. But g double prime of x, that's going to be f prime of x. So that's going to be slope values of this graph f. So for example, uh, g double prime of f g double prime of any point on this line is slope four, as we said, except the endpoints, because that's a sharp point. So we're ready to do the free response question. Uh, looks like we might do some areas probably throughout this free response question. So we need to be careful with areas, of course, uh, with the negatives, but we will get to that when it comes. So here's my first question. Uh, if the integral from negative six of f of x is equal to eight, then you, we want to find this integral right here. So, um, the problem with this graph is that this graph only goes from negative five to six. So we don't know what the integral of f will be, negative seven to, to negative five. So it looks like we're going to need to find that in some way because we need to find the integral of negative seven to negative five. This is a rule that doesn't appear often on these graph for response questions, but it's more likely to be on the uh, multiple choice section. But this is the small, middle, middle, big rule. It's an integral property. What it says is that the integral from negative seven of six of f of x equals the integral from negative seven to negative five of f of x. So uh, let me rewrite the entire rule before I explain it. So this is what I call the small, middle, middle, big rule. Basically, if you wanna find the area from a small number to a big number, you can split it midway. So it's the area from small to middle, middle to big. So this is an integral property. Watch our video on integral properties if you would like. So when we're trying to find this integral, uh, that's gonna be this one right here. So this is what we're gonna to try to find. This one was equal to eight, that's great. We can call this guy just a big variable. Let's just call it a big X. Uh, to separate it from these little x's, of course. And then we're going to need to find this integral right here. But that integral will be found using um, the area under the curve. Because notice, we are finding the area from negative 5 to 6. Basically, we're, we're going to find the area between f and the x-axis of negative 5 to 6, because it is between negative 5 and 6. So uh, when we find this area, we're going to be careful. Of course, area under the curve is negative. So we can start writing just right area. 
put x is quite large, but we have 8 equals x, and then we're going to put area in parentheses here, just for this end angle right here, because this is what we want to find. So again, let's just be careful as we do these areas. We can also be a little bit clever when we cancel out areas, so let's try to that. So this small triangle looks like it's just base 1, height 1, so that's just going to be 1 times 1 divided by 2. Quite lovely, not too bad. Then I'm going to find the area of this triangle right here. Looks like it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's just going to be 4 times 4, uh, which is 16, divided by 2 is 8. But remember that it's negative area, so we're going to write negative 8 here. Why did I not find the area of this triangle right, right here? Well, I can give myself a little bit of leeway here because I noticed that I don't need to find this area of this small triangle because this triangle being negative will cancel out with this triangle because they have the same height, uh, 4, and the same base, 1. So they'll have the same area. So I don't need to find the area from here to here. Uh, you can sort of take these shorter shortcuts as you do this. If you wanted to, of course, you could just subtract this entire triangle, add this triangle. But we were able to save a little bit of time by canceling out some areas. Finally, we want to find the area of this weird region right here. Uh, I'm going to shade it in. So how in the world are we going to find the area of this uh, weird region? Well, it's going to be the semicircle or semicircle. Still don't know how to pronounce that word. But uh, sometimes it's not the area of the semicircle. Like if the semicircle is right here, then it would just be the area of the semicircle. Here we have to do a little bit of clever geometry. What we have to notice as well, if we find the entire area of this rectangle and we subtract off the semicircle, we will find the area of what we want to find. So that's what we're going to do. So what is the area of this rectangle first of all? Well, because it's the diameter of the semicircle and the, di uh, the semicircle has radius 2, it looks like it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's actually a square. So it's going to be 4, not the best picture because it looks like a rectangle, but again, I have my apologies for that. But this area right here it looks like it's going to be 4 times 4. So it's going to be uh, 4 times 4 divided by 2. No, divided by 2, sorry. It's just 4 times 4 because we're doing a square, not a triangle. My apologies. These areas are pretty hard, so that's why it takes uh, a little bit of time. Take your time, be patient with these, because it's easy to make mistakes, as I just did. Now we want to find the area of this semicircle, or semicircle, however you pronounce it. That's going to be pi r squared. So it's going to be pi r squared. Where should I write that? Maybe we'll write it right here. So it's going to be pi r squared divided by 2, because it's a semicircle. The radius is 2, so it's going to be pi times 2 squared over 2. That's going to cancel out. So it looks like you're going to get 2 pi here. So this is my area. Uh, quite complicated. Let me remind you. Uh, hopefully we can move this around so that you can see it. So basically, uh, we're finding the area from negative 5 all the way down to 6 here. The area from this to this was a small little triangle, 1 half. The area from this to this was a negative big triangle, negative 8. Then we canceled out these so that we didn't need to find the area. And finally, we wanted to find the area of this weird region, but we saw that that was a square minus the semicircle. So the square is 4 times 4. The semicircle is minus 2 pi. So now I don't have to look at this picture for a while. That's great because it was pretty complicated. Let's just solve for x here. So again, x is the area from negative 5 to 6 between uh, f of x and the x-axis. So let's solve here. So it's going to be 8 is equal to x. Well, it looks like we're going to get 16. And 16 minus 8 is 8, which is great because it's going to cancel out with this 8. So it looks like my x is not too bad. If I bring, if I cancel these out and bring these over, just going to be 2 minus 1 half. So this is what x is. And by x, I mean this integral right here. Uh, if you had been more precise or if I had been more precise, I would have kept rewriting this integral but it's just a little bit hard to just not write a big X there. So we are unfortunately not done with the question. Uh, this is why this is difficulty eight. It does take a little bit of time to do all these questions. Now we're ready for this integral right here. So how do you do this integral? Well, we just found the integral from negative seven to negative five. That's this weird number two minus one half. So it seems like what we should do is split this up so that we can use it. So I'm gonna split it up in one step. I'm gonna first split up this integral so it's the integral of 3 of f of x plus 2. And then I'm going to take out that 3 because I love to take out the constant out of my integrals. So it's going to be 3 times the integral of negative 7, negative 5. 
f of x dx plus the integral of negative 5 to negative 7 of um, 2. Great. So we're going to replace, again, what is x in this case? It's going to be the area from negative 7 to negative 5. So that's going to be 3 times 2 pi minus 1 half. Sure. And now we have to do this integral right here. This integral, of course, will not use the picture because it's just an integral of 2 by itself. The antiderivative of 2 is just 2x because the derivative of 2x is 2. Then we're going to plug in negative 5 and negative 7 using fundamental theorem of calculus. Top number minus the bottom number when plugged in. So it looks like we're going to get 6 pi minus 3 halves. Then uh, we're going to get something minus something again. Looks like it's going to be negative 10 when you plug in negative 5. And then it'll be uh, negative 14. So it'll be plus 14, actually. And we are almost done. Bear with me, friends. We can do it. Negative 10 plus 4 is 4. 4 minus 3 halves. Um, well, 4 is 8 halves. So 8 halves minus 3 halves is negative 5 halves. And what a question to start off. Quite difficult, but we were able to manage to get to the finish line in the end. So let me re remind you what we were doing because it was quite an extensive process. Well, we wanted to find the area, or we wanted to find this integral right here. When we look at this integral, we can say, well, we can split it up like this, but I still need to find the integral of f some way from negative 7 to negative 5. They give me this information, and they give me a graph with f values from negative 5 to 6. So what I first did is I tried to solve for this integral right here. And that was my small, middle, middle, big rule. So 8 was given. And then I to find this integral, I could just find the area. And I was very careful with the area. Triangles, positive, negative, canceling out. And then this weird region right here, we noticed was a square minus a semicircle. Where this is at the point 4, 2. So we did that. We found the area. Got our integral value from negative 7 to negative 5. We are good to go. So we replaced it, and then finally we just did the simple integral, and we were able to find the answer. So again, a lot harder question than perhaps the questions that we've seen before. Um, a lot of questions we've seen before would basically be just asking this integral uh, right here, the area integral. But again, once we found what we were used to, we were quickly able to use that information to solve this harder question. So let's try the next question. A uh, similar thing, a little bit harder, but again, we are going to do it. So we're going to evaluate this integral right now, but this one is even weirder because they don't even tell me the numbers. I have to find the numbers because it looks like this integral will be on the interval where g of x, remember g of x is defined in the givens, is equal to, is both decreasing and concave up. So this is the question I've been waiting for. This is, uh, this is shapes and curves questions. These are my rules that I've been writing uh, in all, all these videos. So G is increasing, G local min or max, inflection point, concave up or down. These are the questions I love because I can just look at the graph and apply them. So let's do this. I'm going to first find this mysterious interval and then I'll be able to take the integral. So G is decreasing and G is concave up. We want both of these to happen at the same time. So where's g is decreasing? Well, the rule is g is decreasing when g prime equals f is negative. Because remember, uh, when we do the uh, derivative of this, that's the fundamental theorem of calculus, derivatives and integrals cancel each other out. So you have g prime equals f. So here we go. Uh, g is decreasing when g prime equals f is negative. Hopefully, by the time you've watched this video, you're not super confused about the shapes of curves rules. If you are, go back to our previous videos where I explain it a little bit more in depth and more slowly. But for now, we're, we need concave up as well. G is concave up when G prime equals F is increasing. So that's G prime equals F increasing. Remember that this is definitely totally different than this word, even if they both have the words increasing or decreasing. Um, it depends on what is increasing or decreasing. So G is decreasing when G prime equals F is negative, and uh, then G prime equals F is increasing when G is concave up. So there's a huge difference between a function increasing or decreasing, that's based off whether F prime is positive or negative, or if a function, uh, function's derivative is increasing or decreasing, that tells you whether the function is concave up or down. Again, you want to be really good at with those shapes and curves rules. But uh, now that we want, now that we have justified, we can look for what we want on the graph. 
So we want g prime equals f to be negative. So we're in this negative triangle right here. And we also want g prime equal f to be increasing, to have positive slope. So it looks like our interval is just 0 to 1 in the end. So it's just going to be 0 to 1. Uh, this is a pretty typical question. This is where most questions end. But this is difficulty number 8. So we are going to do this integral, but it shouldn't be too bad. So we found our a and b. That was where g is decreasing and concave up. So let's write that out. Um, 4 f prime of x plus 8 of x. Something math has taught me is when I have a difficult problem, um, oftentimes it's better to split it up into smaller problems. I'm going to do the same thing as I did here. Split up this integral, take out the constants. So let's do that. So it's going to be 4 integral of 0 to 1 f prime of x um, plus the integral from 0 to 1. Actually, I don't really need to split this up, but I've already started, so I might as well. So in this case, what's the antiderivative of f prime? Well, it's just f, of course. And then what's the antiderivative of 8x? Well, it's going to be 4x squared according to the um, fundamental, uh, uh, fundamental theorem of calculus, the power rule, where we add 1, so it's 1 to 2, and then we divide by our new exponent, so that became 8 divided by 2, which is 4. Then we're going to plug in 0 and 1 because the fundamental theorem of calculus told me. So what I'm going to get is I'm going to get 4 times f of 1 minus plus, plus, that should be a plus, 4 times 1. Not super exciting, but we just work with what the problem gives us. And then we have 4 times f of 0 plus 4 times 0. Of course, that will be 0. So it looks like the only things we need to find is f of 1 and f of 0, but that shouldn't be too bad. Keep in mind that this is a graph of f, so f of 1 is just the y value and f of 0 is just the y value at those respective points. So f of 1 looks like it's 0 and f of 0 looks like it's negative 4. So f of 1 is 0, f of 0 is negative 4. Those are the y values on the graph of f. So we're going to write to the left, which is not the best way to write math, but that's my only option here. So it's going to be 0 plus 4 minus, and this minus comes from the fundamental theorem of calculus, 4 times negative 4, so we'll write negative 16 in parentheses to be safe, and then plus 0, that's lovely. Uh, that goes away, of course. Now, it looks like the answer 4 minus minus 16 is 20. So again, a pretty difficult question because it required two parts. The first thing we had to do is see where g is both con uh, decreasing and concave up, but we're very, really comfortable with our shapes of curves rules. So g is decreasing when g prime equals f is negative. g is concave up when g prime equals f is increasing. That appeared uh, on this portion of the graph right here, 0, 2, 1. Then when we had the graph, it was actually pretty easy to take this antiderivative. When we needed f values, we just looked at the graph of f, the y values of that graph. So before we go on to number three, which is going to be a fun question, I promise, let me remind you sort of some shapes of curves rules. So where is g equal, uh, where is g increasing? Well, that's where g prime equals f is positive. So it's from this point to this point, and then everything past one. Where is g prime equal, uh, where is g, uh, for example, concave down? That's when g prime equals f is decreasing. That's going to be at this portion and then this portion of the graph. We're literally going down. g prime equals f is decreasing. Uh, this point right here is a rel max because g prime equals f goes from positive to negative. This point is a rel min. g prime equals f goes from ne uh, negative to positive. These three points right here, one, two, three, are inflection points because g prime equals f goes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. And then finally, you can, of course, combine those rules of concave up and uh, decreasing just like we did in this question. So notice how quickly I can rattle off these shapes of curves questions. It's not that I'm smart. Uh, you're probably way smarter than me. It's just because I have a lot of experience with these pictures. I'm not even thinking about any math. I just look at where the graphs are and I know it exactly what to look for because I've done a lot of practice. And if you work at it, you'll definitely be better than me. I have high hopes for you, all of you. But... Uh, we still have to go on, and it looks like we have an absolute max or minimum question, which looks to be pretty intimidating, but uh, let's see what we have in store for us. So g of x is equal to this guy right here, so I'm going to write the locate step. So this is the closed interval method, of course. Um, we have several videos covering this. 
as well as videos that are just on absolute max or min exclusively. So check those out if you want more practice. We're going to locate the function. That's going to be this g of x that's given 0 to x, f of t dt. Then we are going to take the derivative. Again, the derivative is going to be g prime of x is equal to f of x because of fundamental theorem of calculus. We're going to write equals zero because we might get points. We're just saying derivative equals zero because we considered it. Looks like it's going to be, in this case, one and negative four, which is perfectly fine with me. Then we are going to construct this table. Uh, what's going to be on the left side? Of course, it's going to be our critical points that fit within our interval, but both of these points fit within that interval. So it's negative five, negative four, one and six. We are going to plug in all these points. So it might take a little bit of time, but bear with me. We're going to plug in all these points into X and we're going to find the area from zero to that number. So let's do that. Remember, uh, when we do this, it's going to be still negative errors or negative and things like that. So I'm going to do the positive stuff first. I usually start off with the six. So when we find the area from zero to six, uh, again, negative area is negative and positive area is positive. So area underneath the curve is still considered negative. So remember that this triangle can start with this triangle. So we have the square situation. Remember that the area of the square was 16, 4 times 4. And then we're going to subtract off 2 pi because that was the area of the semicircle. So, the, so it looks like 6 is going to be 16 minus 2 pi. Then we're going to do g of 1. Uh, g of 1, when we, when we plug in 1, it's only the area from 0 to 1, which is not too bad. Looks like it's just this triangle right here. It's negative. Uh, the area of this is going to be 4 times 1, base times height, divided by 2. So it's just going to be 2, uh, but negative. So it's going to be negative 2, actually. Now we are going to find the area uh, when we plug in negative 4 here. But remember that whenever we plug in a number that is smaller than the number on the bottom, we do have to negate the area. So let me just write that on the side here. Uh, we're trying to find the area from negative four to zero of f of t. Because we plugged in a smaller number on the top, we do have to flip it. So that's gonna be equal to uh, this area. Uh, I wrote the same thing, but negative four on the bottom now, which is the area between negative four and zero. So if you want, you can write negative area, but of course the area itself is negative. It was this triangle right here which was um, area of 4 times 4 divided by 2, uh, which is 8. So let's be careful with all these negatives. It's going to be actually negative negative 8 because um, there's two negatives here. One negative is because the area is underneath the curve from here to here. And then one area is because of the flip because we plugged in a smaller number. So in this case, this will be 8. Finally, we have to do the area of negative 5, but it's going to be the area when we plug in negative 5, it's going to be from negative 5 to 0. We're going to still have to negate the area because we're going to plug in a smaller number into the top of the integral. So it's going to flip the integral. Then we're going to find the area. The area will be 1 half minus 8. And then we'll ha have a negative in front because it will be negative the area. The area itself will be 1 half this positive triangle minus this negative triangle. And then we'll have a negative in front. So that's going to be 1 half minus 8. Uh, 1 half minus 8 is going to be, what is 1 half one, minus 8? I believe it's going to be 1 half minus uh, 16 over 2. So that is negative 15 over 2. But we're going to put, again, a negative in front. So that we're going to end up with 15 over 2 in the end. So again, be very careful of these negatives. There's two main negatives. The first negative is for anything under the curve. Uh, counts as negative area. This part right here, this part right here. And also there's a negative if you ever plug in a number that is smaller than the lower limit of the given. You're not finding areas actually. You're going to find the area and then you're going to negate it because you have to flip the integral. And again, we have a lot of practice on this throughout this channel. Hopefully by the time you get to difficulty eight, you do have some sort of familiarity with it. But if you're feeling a little bit timid in terms of finding these all these areas, please watch our previous video and this playlist. But now we are ready to do the max or the min. So the min is definitely negative 2. That's pretty obvious because it's the only negative number. So the min value, 
the, we can write the abs min value for absolute min value is negative two at x is equal to one. And then the question is, which one is the biggest out of these three numbers? Well, eight is 16 over two, so that's bigger than that one. And two pi, remember, is around 3.1-ish. So two times 3.1-ish is 10-ish. And six, um, 16 minus the six point, wait, sorry. Three pi is around 3.14-ish. When you multiply by two, it's around six-ish. And then when you subtract it from 16, it's around 10-ish, which will be bigger than eight. So hopefully that made sense. Uh, we're just sort of approximating this number. So this is actually gonna be the abs max. So the abs max value is uh, 16 minus two pi at x is equal to six. And that is our answer. So again, what we did is we did our normal absolute maximum or minimum pro uh, process. We located the function, found critical points, constructed a table, and here to find the right column of the table, we had to take the area from that number and zero. Finally, we have one last question to do. And this question is a limit question. And remember that a lot of limits on the AP exam will be um, L'Hopital's rule. So let's see if it's L'Hopital's rule. Let's see if we get zero in the top and the bottom when we plug in one. Well, when we plug in one in the top, it'll be one squared minus one, that's zero. And then f of one, remember, is going to be this point right here. So it's zero. So you do get zero on the top. Let's write that down. Limit as x goes to one, x squared plus three f of x plus one equals zero. Then we are going to do uh, the limit of x goes to one at the bottom to see if that's zero. So we're going to get, looks like we're going to get minus two squared when you plug in one. So it'll be uh, minus four. And then f prime of one, remember that this is the, that is the slope of this line. Uh, when we want to find f prime values, that's the slope of the graph. In this case, it is four. So you're going to get four minus four. This is equal to zero. So now we're ready to lope that tall if you want to use it as a verb or apply L'Hopital's rule. So by L'Hopital's rule or the hospital's rule, I'm writing it the uh, free response way. I'm not writing zero over zero. I'm trying to have the discipline not to do that. I'm writing it in the very precise way so I can get full credit for my work. So it's gonna be limit as x goes to one of x squared. You write the original limit first, and then you can write the limit of the ratio of the derivatives. So take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. Do not confuse L'Hopital's rule with quotient rule, of course. So it's gonna be two x, plus three f prime of x over f double prime of x, that's strange. And then it's gonna be two times x of plus one. That's how you take the derivative. So when we plug in one, we're probably not gonna get zero over zero again. So it looks like it's gonna be two plus, well, remember that f prime of one is four because it's the slope of this at this point. So we're gonna get three times four, which is 12. So it looks like it's gonna be two plus 12. Uh, when we plug in one here, it's gonna be two times two, which is minus four. The only question is what's f double prime of one? Well, there's multiple ways to think about this. If you remember, f prime of x on this entire line is not four, so the derivative of that is zero, so f double prime of one is actually zero. Another way to say that is that this function f, we don't care about, I'm not talking about g, I'm talking about f. Uh, f is concave, uh, uh, not concave up or concave down, it's not really part of a U or part of a hill. So the second derivative will also be zero if you want to think about it like that. Keep in mind that's totally different than G is concave down because the rule is G is concave down when G prime equals F is decreasing. That is from here to here and here to here. So again, keep in mind when you're talking about graphs of F or Gibbons, whose derivatives are the graphs of F, everything becomes different. But it looks like we're done with this question. Uh, we're going to get 14 over negative 4, which is equal to negative 7 over 2. So this has been quite a long video, but I hope that this has been useful. Let me quickly remind you what we did throughout this free response question. We were presented with this graph of f, a little bit weird. We were given the normal g of x equals the integral of f, so we immediately decided, well, g prime is equal to f. That's the y values. We never use this, but g double prime is equal to f prime values. That is the slope. Uh, we had to find this difficult integral. In order to do that, we had to do a series of steps. 
we first split it up and we saw that, well, we just need to find this integral now because I can do all the rest with fundamental theorem of calculus and integral properties. So uh, we implied the small, middle, middle, big rule of integral properties. Uh, the integral from small to a big number is small, middle, middle, big. And then to find this integral, we used area. And we did, we're just careful with area. Negative area counts as negative because it's below the graph. And then this weird shape was a squared minus a semicircle. It would be more evident if it were, had been a better picture. Then we had a G, uh, a shapes of curves question where G is decreasing and concave up. We, of course, justified it in our specific way as we normally do. We saw that it was on 0 and 1 because it's below the graph and going up. So G prime equals F is negative. That means that G is decreasing and G prime equals F is increasing. That means that G is concave up. So we got that. And then we were able to easily find this integral uh, because when we wanted to find F values, that were just the Y values of this graph. Finally, we had to do absolute max or min, which was a pretty difficult process, but it was just our normal thing. G, G prime, critical points. And then when we did the table, we plugged it into zero, uh, not zero, x and found the area between x and zero keeping in mind that if we had to negate the integral when we plugged in negative numbers because negative numbers are smaller than our given number so instead of finding area we found negative the area but of course area under the curve under the x-axis between the x-axis and the curve uh, is still negative so we had to be careful with that finally we had one low pitoch question which wasn't too bad um, to find f values, again, it was the y values. To find f prime values, it was the slope. To find this f double prime value at the end, uh, it was the f double prime value at 1. So it was concave. It was neither concave up or down at f. So it was 0. But I'm getting a little bit thirsty. I've been talking for quite a long time. But hopefully this, again, was useful. As you can see, you can make these questions slightly harder by adding little things to our normal questions. Like instead of finding this area integral, why don't you find this harder integral? Or instead of uh, finding whether G is decreasing and concave up, why don't you find it with an integral as well? Or uh, let's do L'Hopital's rule where you have to uh, find F double prime at some point. But if you keep with the rules that we've been using from the very beginning, the rules that govern shapes of curves right here, you should be fine, and if you stuck with our area uh, methods as well, just being very careful with negative areas. Two big negatives, remember, area under the curve is negative. Also, when you have to negate the area, because you place a smaller number on top of a bigger number in the integral, we've done that quite a few times. When you know all those rules, then everything becomes pretty fluid, uh, even when the questions become a little bit harder or add another layer, uh, we are just able to answer the questions uh, because we are comfortable with sort of our practice. And really, how does that comfort come about? It is with practice and experience, not based off natural ability, which I don't even know what that is anymore. So I'm hopefully that this was useful for you. The best thing you can do is continue watching this video series as we go through 9 and 10 or check out our other videos on other free response questions. But again, I am going to um, go get a drink of water because I am pretty thirsty. Thanks again for watching and goodbye.